some people say that RVs are not built or designed to live in them full time. What say you? I don't know the numbers, but I would assume, safely assume, that there are more part-time RVers and weekend RVers than there are full-time living RVers. It's funny you should say that. Is it? Because I do know the numbers. Oh, oh wow. Aha. Look at you. I got on the Google. You got on the Google. <laughs> what did the Google tell you? The Google told me that the average RV owner camps 28 to 35 days per year. Okay. So, if you do the math, which I'm not good at, and the, so, <laughs> so, so to make it easier for me, yeah. let's just go a month. The okay. average RV owner spends one month a year in their RV. Okay. So if you think about it that way, those of us who live in our RVs full time put 12 years of wear and tear on our RV per year. Per year. Okay. So it takes the recreational RVer 12 years to move around as much, all the parts to move around as much, miles towing as it takes us for one year. For one year. Okay. Wow. So if you are full-time RVing and you're wondering why so much stuff is going wrong with your RV, <laughs> if you've been in your RV for a year, you've put 12 years of use it's, on it. Two years, 24 years. You just keep doing the math. And the yeah. longer you stay in this RV, the more likely it is for things to go wrong. Yeah. Less wear and tear for those who are stationary, even though you're still using your water lines, your gas lines, your all your tanks and yeah. all that stuff. So that stuff still has a potential to break, but moving parts like slides going slides in and out, in and the out. hitch, yeah. the tires and all that stuff, if you're stationary, not as big of a deal. But yeah. Since we've been in ours for six months, which is equivalent to six years of wear, and I keep track. I'm a spreadsheet guy. Yes. I keep track of everything mm -hmm. that goes wrong in the RV. We've had 10 things go wrong in our RV. All small things. Most of the stuff we could fix ourselves. We did have to have Alliance send us a couple of parts and pieces, which we did ourselves. Yeah, like the missing trim on one window. Yeah. Yeah, so those 10 things Minor for things. us wasn't a big deal. So if, if we were recreational RVers, and in this six years, we had 10 small things go wrong, that's pretty good. I'd say that's a win. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty dang good. A lot of RV manufacturers will not warranty your RV if you live in it full time. True. Actually, most most won't won't warranty it if they if yeah yeah mm -hmm. we got lucky because Alliance does warranty, do warranty for full time RV living. Yes. Uh, when we had the Montana before this, we had to sign an affidavit. We did. When we purchased the Montana, we had to sign an affidavit saying that we won't live in it full time. <laughs> and that if we do, it would it void our, our warranty. warranty. Now it was only a one year warranty, but if something had happened in that first year, it's not covered. Yeah, most people are just rolling the dice with that. So I would say do your research, you know, yeah. make sure you're getting into something that's gonna warranty you full time. Maintenance becomes an issue. Yeah. And not just because they may not cover it under warranty, because even if they do cover it under warranty, when you're living in it full time, even if it's covered and they'll fix everything, you, you have to go through yeah. the struggle of staying somewhere else, else. Yeah. a hotel. Luckily for us, part of our warranty covers a hotel stay up to, I think, seven days or something, like, something that. like that. But if so, it takes longer, it's on you. If it takes longer, it's on you. And it's just inconvenient. It is inconvenient. You go to a hotel, you're living out of a suitcase. Or you gotta go stay with family. And you're not really sure when you're gonna get your RV back. It's a whole thing. We've been through that. Yes not fun mm -mm. at all when you take it in to get fixed they don't care that you live in it full time <laughs> they could care less if they got 20 rvs in the queue look you're number 21 you well i live in it i don't not my problem that sucks That's <laughs> <laughs> so we had to call around because where we were at the time we had our major yeah. issue the closest dealer to fix ours uh said two to three months yes we had to call around. We actually had to travel a little farther away to get to a place. And then we had to cancel travel plans, cancel mm -hmm. destinations. So it, even though it didn't cost us that much, and if it's under full warranty, it won't cost you anything for the repair. You have to think about all the, uh, the logistics in, and, the and headache that it's yeah. going to cause. Another thing about RVs is they don't hold up 
as well as houses <laughs> in storms. Oh well, no, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna take a little more beating. That's one of the biggest things for me, I think, is yeah. when storms roll in, it gets a little sketch. Yeah, well, you pray it's somewhat built <laughs> well. <laughs> Look, there's nowhere in an RV to hide from a tornado. Well, no, when it comes to a tornado, <laughs> no, but I mean, just, I mean, like a storm is different than a tornado. Yeah, but you got, you know, storms, um, they're more susceptible to hail damage. That's Leaks. What, yeah leaks uh they're more you know hurricanes tornadoes are the worst yeah because they just kind of creep up on you and they could toss an rv down the road no problem at all honestly the best thing that we've experienced weather wise or mother nature wise was yeah. the earthquake that really yeah no big deal doesn't <laughs> it doesn't hurt your rv because your rv shakes all the time anyway yeah and generally in most of these rv parks you're not close to anything that could potentially fall, fall over on top of your rv so you just shake around a little bit i mean it's no worse than moving day yeah. on moving day we've had we've stuff had worse fly out of cabinets and all over the floor the the toilet brush came out of the bathroom down, down the, the hallway stairs. down the stairs into the front door <laughs> we open the door the, the brush is sitting right there so even when we're in the earthquake it didn't even it move didn't that do, much no so moving day is worth it worse than an earthquake it is yeah if you have to go through one of those things i'd rather have an earthquake yeah and i'll say that you know most of these rvs are not designed for extreme temperatures either no they're not they're not insulated well um even if you have an insulated rv like we do well but i mean to a, it only to a point yeah. is insulating and i think you know honestly i think all manufacturers just slap it on that sticker that says four seasons and <laughs> it, well yeah and on a lot of forums <laughs> people would agree they're like uh they say mine's four seasons i don't believe it yeah because people are getting like the reflex it and the skirts and yeah. the extra ins we've seen extra insulation just like taped to the side of slides <laughs> yes even on the outside that yeah we saw that in the extreme heat a lot of rvs only have one air conditioner yeah. Smaller RVs only have one air conditioner. And you only get fifth wheels like we had the Montana only had two air conditioners. And when we were in places that was like triple digits, digits. those two air conditioners, they just don't keep up. No, they ain't got a fighting chance really. No, they're running 24 seven and just hustling and it's still hot. Yeah, and that excessive use led to one of our compressors. In the air conditioner going out to go out yeah yeah, yeah. but luckily for us uh we have an alliance and our alliance has three air conditioners three. so they even a though a little more fighting chances yeah we've dangle. been in some pretty warm places we have this summer yes and we were fine yeah we were so i mean not to sound like a commercial for alliance but but it was a draw to stuff, yeah. you know the full-time warranty yeah the, the three air conditioners the good insulation it's a good insulate yeah yeah, and we've only had 10 small things go wrong. Yeah. So not too shabby. Right. I would love for manufacturers to, even if it came down to that's a special order kind of thing, like you won't see them just all over the lots. You may have one to see or, you know, on a dealership, but you would have to order it. But they should do a full timing line. Yeah, I agree that you need one that you can move around a lot and is gonna be more structurally sound. Yeah. Maybe they put a little more time and a little more effort into it. And you can charge more. I'm okay with that. I'll and that's pay what more. I was about to say. And that's why it would have to be something like a special custom order because to me, I'll pay more if I have to worry about less in the long run. Yeah, and really all these RVs that are really, really expensive, really, really high end. Um, and they are beautiful. They are, but those are just the finishes that cost that much money yes all of the guts the it's wiring the, the piping the all that it's stuff the plastic parts it's all the same <laughs> stuff that's in this rv it's all the same stuff that's in your rv they're paying for better cabinets nicer tile floors yeah. bigger shower yes. all the nice cool lickies and chewies yes <laughs> yes i would just prefer you don't get better water lines you don't yeah. get better power running Okay. I mean, it still looks like a bird's nest. Which I know it does come down. Everybody says, well, it comes down to weight. You got, and I get that. Yeah. But like when we had to replace a plastic piece and when we asked the company about why is it even plastic, when it's something so crucial, why is it plastic? And he said, well, it's a cost 
and weight issue. Yeah. And I'm like, well, we bought the part at a hardware store. For like 12 bucks. It, yeah, not even $12. So, come so on look, now. Put a brass one in there. Charge me 100 yeah, bucks for it at the time of my RV <laughs> exactly. purchase. That's and fine. so it won't break. And it did, even though it is brass, it really doesn't weigh that much. No. It's not busting weight. So I'm not buying that response. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I make a line for people who are willing to pay more for those parts. Yeah. In those crucial areas. I'm not saying everything's got to be the heavy yeah. duty brass, everything, but on crucial connections, it that should be. should be, make it that way. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Are RVs uh, meant to be lived in and traveled in full time? Yeah. What do you think? Well, either way, we're going to keep living in ours. Yes. We're going to keep traveling in ours, and hopefully it'll hold up. And uh, we'll just see what happens. We'll keep you updated. Mm -hmm. If it yeah. falls apart, we'll definitely do a video about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, stick around for a couple more seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help vets out on the road, everything you need to know is down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.